Good afternoon friends, I am Deepa Khatri, Assistant Director at ICSI and on behalf of ICSI, I welcome all the viewers to this webinar on industrial audit. This is a webinar uh, which is a step towards knowledge building initiative of members. An industrial audit is a compliance audit. It is a comprehensive review of an organization's adherence to the regulatory guidelines as far as industrial laws are concerned. In this audit, independent consultants evaluate the strength and thoroughness of compliance preparations for the smooth workflow of the organization. To speak more on this, today we have with us Dr. K. S. Ravi Chandran. I welcome on behalf of ICSI to Mr. K. S. Ravi Chandran. He is our fellow member of the institute and also holds the degree of MCOM, LLB apart from other degrees. He has served the Indian Air Force for over 9 years and he has been lecturer in commerce for the government of Arunachal Pradesh. And uh, he is a practicing company secretary ever since 1994 and founder and managing partner at KSR and Company. Uh, he has authored a lot of books. He's, uh, he has got a lot of experience in mergers, acquisitions, joint ventures, etc. So I welcome Dr. K. S. Ravi Chandran to speak more on industrial audit. Thank you. Good afternoon, friends. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank uh, ICSI for uh, this program. I believe this will be a new chapter in the years to come for our members. Industrial audit as uh, Deepa has introduced is uh, basically a compliance audit and uh, therefore compliances I would say are very close to the heart of company secretaries. Company secretaries and compliances go together, is it not? So, company secretaries and compliances, let us look at it this way, whether it is Companies Act or uh, Foreign Exchange Management Regulations, the SEBI regulations for that matter, sector specific regulations, I am of the view that we are thoroughly prepared for carrying out audits of compliances generally there is absolutely there need not be a, a concern at the beginning whether this is my cup of tea I, I would uh, definitely say that we, may, we must go with a very confident frame of mind in order to undertake industrial audits Two. I would say industrial audit is two because uh, we have been now at least after the Companies Act 2013 requiring secretarial audit. I think industrial audit is not something very difficult, not something very difficult to follow, practice. I think Institute of Company Secrets of India has taken up this cause of spreading the message about the connect between company secretaries and industrial audit. I think therefore today is a, we can say a very important day in which the institute has thought it fit to require members to attend to a program on industrial audit. We can say a tree is the form of a seed that you see. For industrial audit is a very big tree and we are going to be seeing and sowing the seeds and reaping the benefits of the same. With that positive frame of mind, you must come together and understand how we go about it, what does it mean and what are the various requirements of the uh, requirements of this uh, audit and uh, who are the target uh, clients and uh, how do we gear up for that. You know, we have been used to this, either it is a, you know, if a company is there, a IPO is an industrial activity, I would say. A lawyer can argue uh, whatever is given to him, 
So he can argue that IPO is an industrial activity because it involves movement of resources. A lot of people work industriously at least. So similarly, every such task, once upon a time when postal ballot was introduced, postal ballot was considered to be a very tough task with so many resources to be at the disposal and company secretary was at the command and doing running between the places and getting things organized and getting the results announced. So every such requirement, whether it is the postal ballot or IPO or a qualified institutional placements or listing of securities or delisting of securities, Foreign Exchange Management Act, whether it is FDA or ODA or ECB, I would say that we are already thoroughbred professionals to take up the task. All that is needed is to understand what is this task? What is the objective of this task? How do we go about being members of the Institute of Company Secretaries of India, whether the institute is going to come to our support, offer us materials, offer us visibility, connect with the industry and tell them that industrial audit is our area of focus and our members are entitled to, our members are uh, experienced in, our members are capable of doing this. So there is a task which has to be done at the background by the Institute of Company Secrets of India and that is why I said today we have sown the seed for that. It's going to be uh, days hereafter where we will have to build, build this brand like the secretarial audit. When the secretarial audit was announced, you know very well that how things have fallen in shape today, how things have come to some kind of shape today, how we are all ready to grapple with the reality and do what is required, whether you are in the auditee side or the auditor. I am of the view that completely company secretaries or the proper professionals in order to undertake industrial audits also. If you remember, the Companies Act contained a provision, section 134, requiring the board of directors to make a statement whether the company has proper systems for ensuring compliance with applicable law. I will read out the provision that is 134.5 F. says whether the directors had devised proper systems whether the directors have devised proper systems, please see the language of the section, to comply with, to ensure compliance of the provisions of all applicable laws. There is number one, whether such systems were adequate and whether they are operating, whether they are operating Effectively, effectively. See, what are the things we are supposed to be assisting the board of directors? Compliance with the provisions of all applicable laws includes all laws coming under the industrial law. I believe some of you must be already doing a compliance check for the purpose of <coughs> for the purpose of checking a compliance of applicable law. And then you have to see whether such systems are adequate. Then you have to certify whether it is operating effectively. And that certificate can be the satisfactory report to the directors to add in their director's responsibility statement that they have devised proper systems to ensure compliance with the provisions of all applicable laws. I am of the view that a comprehensive provision has come into place in the form of section 134.5F, which is the base for everything. You have to catch this and take up in a broad way, in a big way, as much as possible because applicable law is something very broad. Whether government itself knows what are the laws available for various sectors, I do not know. On the other day, I was telling somebody, one of my colleagues, that uh, they, the institute must develop a mobile app wherein you put the sector automatically the applicable law comes out 
some suppose you are operating in a you know engineering sector the moment you touch engineering you put it the institute's app will give you all the laws that are available which are applicable generally uh, specifically for the engineering sector hospital sector hospitality sector different sectors the different applicable law list must come by a mobile app which if it is available it will be a very big brand building exercise for the institute if you develop a mobile app today which is child's play for it professionals and put all the laws you know we can always invite the viewers like the encyclopedia like the wikipedia and all these things wherein the people who are in thick of the problem who have witnessed the applicability of a law who have complied with the provisions of law can always add it in the app that this is the law which we have to comply with so that kind of a possibility from different angles you can understand from the directors the language that is in class f of subsection 5 of 134 which says proper systems have to be devised for ensuring compliance of all the provisions of the applicable law which is a very sweeping provision it has a lot of things for the regulators, it has a lot of things for the professionals, across various professionals I would say, and it has got a lot of things for the professionals who are in the employment at top level, uh, senior management guys, the key managerial personnel, the board of directors, the regulators, the rating agencies, the company secretaries institute and the several other institutes will have to look at this provision again and again, and this is a provision I would say that this is a parent provision which requires everything to be done and industrial audit is just a part of it. Therefore, I would like to commence this webinar by an introduction that there is something to be done by company secretaries and it is compliance and that is now today we are going to see about compliance of industrial laws and in a topic called industrial audit. I have a difference of opinion with the observations of the company law expert committee of course i was part of the subgroup for particular provisions which were allocated for that but however the report was saying company secretaries being corporate professionals will be able to uh, look at compliance of corporate laws i would definitely say that there is nothing called corporate law in this country every business entity has to undertake the compliance of every regulation that applies to them which is the basic requirement of the public policy of the government of India. Industrial laws and uh, the related uh, environmental, social, uh, other practices and other uh, codes and uh, regulations are part of that. So, corporate laws is uh, something which is a very, we can say loosely framed language which has got nothing to do with uh, company secretaries. It has got beyond that. Corporate law is not something connected with See, if you look at LLP or a partnership firm or a proprietor, all the provisions under every law is applicable to them. The Companies Act alone may not apply, the LLP Act alone may not apply. Whether it is income tax, direct tax, indirect tax, industrial law, everything will apply for every professional, every form of entity. Therefore, corporate laws, there is nothing like corporate law to say Companies Act, SEBI and FEMA. FEMA applies to everybody. So, with this thought in the mind, let us look at what should be ideally known as the industrial audit. Deepa has read out this introductory passage or paragraph. Industrial audit is a compliance audit. It is a comprehensive review. Adherence to regulatory guidelines is the concept, is the objective. Independent consultants will evaluate the strength and thoroughness of compliance preparations. This is what it is written here. If you look at the provisions of the Companies Act again, you would have seen 138 of the Companies Act. I have just taken you through 134, now I am going to 138. 138 says such class of companies as may be prescribed shall be required to appoint an internal auditor who shall either be a chartered accountant or cost accountant or company secretary should be added here I would say the institute must take this opportunity and make it specific and we cannot be bracketed as such other professional I will read out the amended provision I mean whatever I suggest 
is just a suggestion. It is for the Central Council and the Institute to consider. If it is thought fit, take it up. Such class or class of companies as may be prescribed shall be required to appoint an internal auditor who shall either be a chartered accountant or a cost accountant or a company secretary or such other professional as may be decided by the board to conduct internal audit of the functions and activities of the company. It is these two words, the expressions functions and activities of the company which define what is internal audit. Functions and activities of the company. If you look at this language, even for the purpose of conducting internal audit, functions and activities will certainly include substantial activities that are taking place at the factory level, at the plant level, at the production level, at the manufacturing level. An industrial activity is taking place in the industrial undertaking and that industrial activity is supposed to take place whether you are the owner is an individual or LLP or a company or whatever, it is necessary that those activities are the compliance of all the industrial laws which is going to be christened as the inter industrial audit. And even in the internal audit, you have seen 138, how broadly it has worded that an internal audit of internal audit of functions and activities of the company. I believe these words speak volumes about the scope of the work involved. It is not about checking the vouchers and uh, verifying whether things are in order as per the uh, you know finance control measures that are introduced in the company or as per the system. It is beyond. It is very beyond. It is very very broad. So therefore, we have seen that 134 brings in the industrial audit concept. We have seen 138 brings the industrial audit concept. Of course, secretarial audit is slightly, it has reduced the scope by specifying the special sector specific laws alone and it does not cover these aspects. Therefore, this is a new branch, this is a new product, this is a new, we can say a product of a different nature applicable across every industry whether or not owned by a company. We target of course big companies because small companies may not have much of social footprint. Big industrial establishments having industrial undertakings across the country even beyond the borders of the country would be the ideal target for carrying out the industrial audit. The aim and objective of industrial audit is to confirm to submit and to adapt regulatory and standard compliances. Whether the systems and procedures which are in place in the company or the industrial unit are adequate, do they meet the regulatory framework? Are they standard requirements or we need to introduce more? Therefore, when you think about industrial audit, when you think about industrial audit, I would definitely suggest that you think about the aims and objectives that are sought to be achieved. Unlike a secretarial audit, ladies and gentlemen, please remember a secretarial audit by a company secretary in practice or a statutory audit by a chartered accountant is absolutely different. Here, the statutory audit though appointment takes place by the company, though the auditor is appointed by the shareholders of the company, though auditor is appointed as per the Companies Act, the scope of work is not defined by the company nor capable of being defined by the company. It is statutory in nature. It is driven by the statute requirements. You have to go fall in line with 143 and CARO. Similarly, for secretarial audit, you have to fall in line with MR3. The provisions of 204, 100, uh, MR3 drive home the point that what is your scope of work. Leave aside the issues relating to scope of work on sector specific laws. For a minute, let us understand that a secretarial auditor is appointed for the purpose of doing something which is specified in the act, the, neither the company nor the auditor has any role to play to increase or decrease the 
ambit of the audit. The scope of the audit cannot be, you know, decreased or in, increased. He has got certain rights, powers, and duties which are specifically mentioned in the Act, and that he does. Unlike secretarial audit or statutory audit, internal audit and industrial audit are two different audits which are full support in terms of everything. If you are comfortable with, let us say, part 1, part 2, part 3, part 4, part 5 are there and you want to do only certain parts, you are welcome to do that. Therefore, you can give a start. You can say, at this start, I do this. You can comprehensively enhance the scope of the industrial audit or the internal audit as days go by. Therefore, the aim and objective of internal audit must be understood with that particular concept in mind. The concept of industrial audit or the internal audit, as I told you, is broad, very broad. You can have undefined scope, but for a professional to be engaged in a professional service for a fee, liable and exposed to regulatory disciplinary action or a Consumer Protection Act might uh, come up, it is always a necessary as a matter of fundamental requirement at the beginning to lay down the scope of work through an engagement letter. Unless you are able to decide that these are all the things I will be able to do, you cannot expect the company to appoint you, you cannot expect the company to give you an engagement letter. You therefore, you must be able to look at the width and amplitude of the job or the product I will say. Industrial audit as a product, you should be able to look at it from that view and make it effective. I have always been fascinated in saying that company secretaries, company secretaries, I am saying company secretaries as a class, as a class are people who can assure 100 percent removal of risk arising from regulatory compliances. You tell me, is there any other uh, person has got a difference of view? I am of the view that we are capable of removing 100 percent risk arising from regulatory compliances. Let us consider this point very, uh, you know, interesting point, very uh, thought provoking point. Therefore, industrial audit is one area where you are going to step in and tell the client, tell the companies, I have already told you that this must be the target of big companies only will be your target, not every company. There must be a reasonable size. If you look at the MS uh, Med Act, that is the Micro, Small and Medium and Enterprises Development Act 2006, at least we have to start with medium enterprises and before, beyond that. Small enterprises cannot be uh, bothered with lot of compliances and audits. They have to grow. Small enterprises may not be uh, the pro proper target for this. However, big companies who have medium and heavy, heavy industries, they are the targets for this. So, if you want to assure the company's management something, you will be able to assure that regulatory concerns in this particular segment, in this particular area, in this particular aspect, I am ready to give you 100 percent peace of mind. Which means you are going to work with the company, which means you are going to be shouldering with them, which means you are going to give a hand holding. And that is the beauty of this audit. That is the beauty of this audit. In fact, there was an Asocham conference yesterday. I am in the National Council of the Corporate Frauds and Internal Audit. This was what we thought of uh, sharing. Governance and ethical practices or our cup of tea. What do we try to com communicate to them? That compliances, if they are properly done, there will be, there is no issue with respect to risk arising from compliance uh, deficiencies, compliance deviations or defaults or delays. That will be helping you to tell the board, tell the management that here is one particular aspect which we have taken care of thoroughly, at least in the industrial audit area or some other area like that. So, I am of the view that you will, you will be able to give value addition to the company. That is why I said you are going to be giving shoulder to shoulder. You are going to give hand holding. 
which means you are going to uh, be with the company, rub shoulders with the top management, give them peace of mind, undertake a portion of their compliance burden and ensure that things are done. And we do it for Companies Act, we do it for FEMA, we do it for SEBI regulations and we can always do it for every other regulation. That's why I said compliance of applicable provisions of law is our cup of tea. We can do it. Therefore, in order to give that assurance of 100% compliance, in order to assure risk, completely removal of risk from uh, compliance, uh, regulatory compliances, would you not agree with me that you have to be effective? If you are not effective, the audit effectiveness cannot be studied. Therefore, your objective must be to collect information to understand what are this, what is the scope and lay down the uh, parameters of the audit. You must be able to design the framework and tell the company, this is my framework, this is how I am going to do it. They will be able to do the review, they will be able to understand the procedures, they will be able to help you out to understand the, their procedures and uh, of course uh, by paying fee for you. And that is going to be a big encouraging job. And that is what the institute wants today for company secretaries to, at one point of time we used to think there are no vacancies. At one point of time we used to think whether we should go for career counseling programs. How many times we have thought about it? Today we have got a dearth for the company secretaries. Vacancies are more and we are broadening the scope new and new products are coming, companies or uh, business entities are accepting the role of company secretaries for this and industrial audit is one that I am not speaking as a theory, theoretically as an academician. I am speaking from a practical perspective having done the industrial audit myself across country in various locations with practical experience. Of course, I always had the benefit of having been part of the Indian Air Force on the engineering side which has helped me understand a lot of technical matters, but technological things are not there in the industrial audit. You need not be afraid of the uh, language or the or caption of the product. The product is known as industrial audit doesn't mean that you must be uh, doing an industrial activity or you must be engaged in lathes and fabrication machines and CNC machines and what not. You will be able to achieve success if you are able to define your scope and tell the management this is what is my scope and this is the value addition I am going to give. 100% compliance with zero risk is your slogan. Therefore, take it from me that you can give this assurance. 100% compliance with zero risk. Are the systems in the company working in the best interest of the business? You can tell that. I, would, I am sure that you would have understood about uh, corporate social responsibility, for instance. Corporate social responsibility, for instance, I will say, is not about spending 2% of the money profits in schedule 7 activities, scheduled activities we will say, just on building bridges, roads, toilets, schools and uh, something like that. No, it is not corporate uh, social responsibility. Section 135 is a misnomer. Section 135 drives home the point that Irrespective of the fact that you people are paying taxes, irrespective of the fact that government machinery is engaged in spending lot of uh, money collected from taxes in social works, still there are lot of pockets where benefits have not reached, equal distribution has not taken place, people downtrodden, people are remaining downtrodden for uh, we can say decades and therefore corporate can also step in. It is not that corporate alone or the business entities in this country. It is not that their profits are sufficient for removing the poverty overnight. It is not that they, they, the money that is uh, they are going to be spending in uh, uh, as per the Companies Act 135 of the Companies Act is going to be removing all the ills of the system. No. But this is one way of imbibing something in the mind of the directors, something in the mind of the businessman that there must be something they should do it in return. Therefore, sustainability comes there. You want to do a business, do it sustainable basis. Therefore, environment comes there. 166 of the Companies Act has introduced the requirement of individual directors. Duty to protect the environment is a duty of each and every individual director.
today when a director wants to become a director when a person wants to become a director of the company and he approaches company secretary's office what do you tell him you tell him you must have a din you give him some form ask him some identity residence and get him din that's it you must tell him that you must protect your environment you must tell him that you have a lot of compliances to be done and you have to devise proper systems for that we are the people who can train them that is the situation today so corporate social responsibility is not spending 2% it is beyond and what is that beyond it is doing business in an ethical manner it is doing business in compliance of applicable law compliance of applicable law is a public policy that is why the national social environmental and economic responsibility voluntary guidelines were there in 2011 issued by the institute of corporate uh, affairs which is now forming part of the notification issued by harini balaji in sebi vrr business responsibility report top 500 companies on the basis of market cap let me refer to one of the regulations one principle is the core principle i am saying is well being of employees in the 2011 voluntary guidelines followed by brr under the lodr that is listing regulations we can say in short one principle which is very important principle is well being of employees and what are the things they want to the core elements of this principle the core elements of this principle are you can understand their grievance redressal mechanism is a very important requirement equal opportunities irrespective of caste creed gender race religion disability sexual orientation equal opportunity there is shall not be any discrimination so therefore you are as a company secretary going into the ethical side of the practices followed by the company what are we generally looking at we are generally looking at the top line okay we are uh, talking about uh, so and so limited what is the turnover of the company what is the top line how much how many things they have produced how many markets they have captured but how did they achieve it in the morning only i was discussing about indonesian csr issues wherein a company has spoiled the entire agricultural land in the form in the in the uh, palm tree cultivation or something this is the public domain what is the role of csc now re- related corporate governance professional ethical professional connect with this industrial audit connect with this voluntary guidelines 2011 you will be able to see the beauty of synchronization of the principles in the mind of company secretaries because we are tuned to that compliance is connected governance is connected ethics is connected principles are connected complete professional is developed value addition is offered then you will find grievance redressal equal opportunities anti discriminatory policies discrimination should be avoided you are not going there just to see the returns and records you are going to see from the practices you are going to see from the happening in the company whether there is any discriminatory policy which is institutionalized by default or wantonly by the management of the company whether any person is discriminated in terms of any aspect any criteria for instance age for instance disability for instance caste for instance uh, gender race sexual orientation personal in nature absolutely there shall be no discrimination is what the policy requires and part of industrial audit these kind of ethical practices have to be checked discourage child labor forced involuntary labor all these things will be totally removed work life balance 
a company's owner cannot be only concerned about the number of goods that are produced at the end of the day he must also take care of the basic requirement of living for the purpose of living and that is called work life balance that must also be that is why i was little i can say against the amendment brought about by the maharashtra state by saying overtime up to 115 hours per week i believe is allowed as against previously i think it was about 80 hours or something now we put 115 hours per week per person just imagine a company with only 100 people 100 workers skilled workers and 100 workers on an average for two weeks they will be doing 100 hours at the rate of let us say 6 into 8 and if you are giving them 115 hours more you will understand that 15 days of one person's man hours not less than 15 days of one person therefore 100 workers 115 hours per day is additional i mean overtime then you will realize that this law though probably people in bombay also might not have noticed people in maharashtra might not have noticed but so far as the employer is concerned the employer will be happy to have the same manpower work for more hours because he doesn't need to teach them again he doesn't need to spend his resources in training in movie we making why do they prefer experienced artists because you don't know to tell them how to cry how to speak how to act they are the people who know therefore overtime is preferred by the employers because they can always have the same manpower continue to work without creating any infrastructure specially for them and pay the overtime wages if you increase the overtime permitted hours of overtime it cuts down the number of vacancies available in the country at any point <coughs> number 2 we also go look at skill development the focus of the government is develop the skills which means you are going to bring up employability at the end of the day what is skill development is nothing but employability so you will have lot of people who are capable of being employed very usefully usefully is very important so then you will have to balance these two regulations somebody must apply thought on these things coming to industrial audit working hours though permitted overtime hours though permitted that policy of the company should not be such that it it removes the work life balance as a factor which is very important special needs of economic security the special needs in economic security is another core element which has to be economic security is not merely by paying a salary or wages which is higher than the minimum wages act or something it is more than that it has in my opinion the policy of the company must be that is why previously we had participation of workers in the management of boards the methodology must be across the workers also it should go down it should percolate down to the workers level in giving stock options in giving them remuneration in terms of the profits that are generated by the company so that will be very good you know you have to take them along that is one of the principles which are uh, supposed to be followed by the company and you will be able to look at these aspects these are not top level aspects which are impassionately dispassionately a person can look at it a person can look at these things very beautifully and advise the management a management will be day to day they will be immersed in their duties and burdens they will be shouldering many responsibilities and they would be needing Uh, to complete the uh, requirements of the customer specified requirements which means no they will be running they will be always on their toes 
when uh, somebody is on the toes, how will he be able to apply thought on these things? Very difficult. These are all very long term goals. Policy level which should uh, come, which should percolate down at the top level, then it should, the management must adopt it, then bring it down to the workers, complete top to down approach. So, therefore, industrial audit must also take care of certain principle based ethical principle based factors to be audited. That is why I drew reference to the national voluntary guidelines which are called social, environmental and economic responsibility guidelines. One of the factors, one of the core elements is discouraging child labor, work life balance, special needs and economic security. Safe place to work. Please see this language. Safe place to work. Safe systems to ensure harassment free workplace. Harassment free workplace is a very important factor. Only if you interact, only if you merge yourself with the people, you will be able to realize that. You must be able to identify that. You must have a passion for it. You must have an inclination to do that. You must have a uh, you know, thorough idea or what constitutes uh, discrimination. You must have thorough idea what constitutes danger, where it is not safe, why it is not safe, is there work life balance or they, are they uh, harassed. All these things have to be there and there is no point in keeping everything in policy. Policies are good, practices are not good. What is use? You cannot have a company which has only policies, everything is great, great, great. Practices, no use. Therefore, the people who are supposed to be beneficiaries of this policy, they should be trained, they should, there should be skill development, competence upgrading. I just took you as a preface to industrial audit. Let me tell you once again, as a preface to industrial audit, one of the principles only, I have not gone to all the principles, there are nine principles and uh, we can say nine into nine, eighty-one core elements. I have just taken you through one of the principles, pointing out that these are all part of the scope of the audit. These are all requiring thorough understanding of the ground realities. These things require thorough application of mind. These things do not end with checking compliances, whether you have filed some returns, whether you have got certain licenses and clearances. No, it is beyond. And if you are going beyond, if you are a person interested in going beyond the routine work, the prescriptive work, you will be we can say fit to do the industrial audit also. This is why I said I am prefacing this lecture or this uh, program with this. Therefore, to be efficient, you should have 100 percent compliance capabilities. You should have, uh, you should be offering zero risk. If you want to offer zero risk, you must have the principles in mind, you must have the papers, to be studied, you must have the people to study, you must have the, you must go to the places to study. Sitting in one place, you may not be able to do all these things. So, therefore, whether the systems and practices by the company, are they in the best interest of the business? Are they in the best interest of the employees? Are they in the best interest of the environment? And therefore, are they in the best interest of the society? I would say, that this is a very important focal point in this program. Let us look at the regulations. As I told you, the scope is unlimited. You can always divide it into parts and take this part first, next part, next part, you can add it. As you add experts, as you get experienced, as you acquire expertise, you will be able to add more and more. But in my opinion, an industrial audit will have to focus on regulations which are categorized into four different categories, A, industrial category, 
labor laws environmental laws social welfare legislations all these are the four categories of regulations these regulations i would say form the public policy of the government of india how it should be how the industry should be how the labor to be how they should be treated what are the environmental concerns how they the, there is a social cost how much is the sustainability aspect how much is the degradation avoidance measures how much is the social cost what is the social welfare that people have to go through these are part of the industrial audit i i was uh, reading to yesterday in the newspapers about uh, potassium potassium bromate in breads every day we are consuming breads and you know today you are shocked to know that there is something called potassium bromate and that is being used by the industries of course uh, leading industries like britannia and all they have uh, immediately said we don't use it but potassium bromate from presence gives the bread super soft feel and the shape the shape of a bread has come to that that if you draw a picture of the bread people will automatically tell it is bread bread has acquired such a shape it is like a trademark Gen generic of course but look at from a industrial practice ethical practice environmental side or a human side or a social side if this particular chemical the presence of that is added for the purpose of getting this soft and shape getting this shape and soft whatever you call softness what is the social responsibility here what is the regulation applicable for that will it not be easy for us to understand what are the ingredients is it not very difficult is it very difficult for us to go and find out what are the regulations it's not it is not that difficult so far as things are concerned so therefore industrial law labor law environmental law social law these things have to be clubbed in four categories i have put it for the purpose of introducing the scope of industrial audit now let us see what are the acts i am sure that at least so far as labor regulations are concerned labor law is concerned we would have had an occasion to go through the various laws various we can say statutory instruments which operate under the expression called labor laws it is there part of our icsc syllabus payment of wages act minimum wages act payment of gratuity act payment of bonus act workman compensation act employers liability act employer state insurance act employers provident fund and miscellaneous provisions act trade union act industrial development employment standing orders act maternity benefit act i think there are n number of regulations which are coming under this category and under each category we should be able to study the objective completely look at the provisions understand the core objective of the law what is important for a company secretary who is a qualified professional is he should be able to understand the purpose for the legislation we used to say in the beginning of our uh, study of laws that you want to know the object object to be sought to be achieved what is the mischief we used to say what is the objective of the law what is the policy laid down by the law and how is it getting administered how companies are expected to follow that and that they follow is understood from what returns and registers what is the monitoring mechanism is the monitoring mechanism effective 
do we have sufficient trained genuine i will put genuine inspectors from the labor department who can check this who will be able to check it or our employers going beyond this we have to study this these are each and every law applicability and what is the objective what is the level of compliance what are the returns and records how the practices followed by the company is above the minimum level floor level level 0 which is prescribed here or level 1 we can say is it beyond is it only that much is the company doing something more than what the law requires them give them a good mark if the company is not even following what the minimum law requires give them minus mark you will be able to do a job which is very satisfactory to you it will be value addition it will be educating the people you will be doing a social work and this becomes company secretary social responsibility <coughs> csr it is cssr if you do this job you are paid for it so you get money plus you are happy because you are doing something very important towards the masses to the working class so the labor law is not difficult to study the requirements are very simple the law these laws one important thing is these laws are written in simplest language so state go mostly state government administered laws so the each, each state wherever you are practicing wherever the industrial unit is situate accordingly you should be if it is in jamshedpur you have to know jharkhand law if it is in faridabad haryana to you have to read if it is in pune maharashtra laws you have to study whether esi is applicable to a particular location or not you should know the notifications what are the special laws that are available in a particular state and what are the departments available in that state what are the returns and requirements to be done how the inspections are done how the practices are there each and every state will have difference therefore according to each and every state you should be able to prepare yourself for that unless that is done in that way this law practice is difficult it is not a centralized scheme central laws are there administered and adopted and administered through regulations and rules by the states the departments of state departments the government departments of state government departments the inspections is by the state government therefore all these laws must be taken into account kept in mind with that kind of a perspective if you are taking the work for a company which has got units across the country then every state in which it has got a unit you should be able to have the provisions of these laws in your hand probably you can develop some compliance tool automation tools probably you can uh, write to the company after you are appointed take the information from the company and study it at home thereafter visit the factories do the industrial audit of various compliances applicable under the labor regulations now let us look at the environmental aspects environmental if if somebody says i have not studied environment laws i believe this is part of the system this is part of our icsi syllabus this syllabus is introduced not for giving some introductory rudimentary elementary fundamental and basic knowledge it is introduced in the syllabus with a perspective that cs being experts will be able to a comply with provisions b administer or understand and ensure compliance is thoroughly therefore the moment you talk about environment i don't think we should be going away from that those who are in delhi would have already understood the odd uh, scheme of odd even scheme that is because of environmental factors living is important and the lung space is important when environmental protection is at stake when environmental protection is at stake why would not the companies act say it is the duty of a director to protect the environment certainly it will say what is the great difficulty in understanding environmental 
Protection Act or the various rules and uh, laws relating to pollution control and all. No difficulty. You may not be able to, you may not be as a CS, you may not be able to measure the noise level or measure the ambient air quality or you may not be able to measure the particles in a particular quantity of liquid or water. You may not be able to see hazardous chemicals which is lying around. You may not be able to know whether a fluent treatment plant is functioning properly or not. These are technical issues. Even if you engage an expert, he is not going to come and see and write something. No. He is a person who comes with the equipment for analyzing it. He puts your samples in the analyzer and gets a result. It is not that he enters, he understands. What he understands as he enters an expert is the smell, which you can also know, the noise, which you will also hear, the quality of air, which you will also know, the heat of the air, you know. Therefore, the quality of water, whatever you can hear, you can smell, you can see, senses or five senses or six senses, I don't know. I think we have six senses, I believe. All these senses you can apply and that doesn't require an engineering person in your mind. In your mind only you should have the scientific temper. That's it. Therefore, as a CS also, you can definitely know. If you go to a generator, the generator outside there will be a small uh, board. It will be written 75 dB. That's it. So you can understand the decibels level is this much up, up to about uh, 1 uh, meter or something. So, beyond 1 meter that level falls, acoustic systems are there, water quality, see, smell, odor, I think it is not difficult to understand. Generally, by common sense you will know that there is a problem here, the plant is not safe, the ambient air quality is not good, there is a problem, oxygen levels are less, pollution is high, dust is there in the particle we can see through naked eyes. A lot of spillage, a lot of uh, letting of, discharging of effluents. Things can be seen. We, quality checking, parameter checking requires analyzers and equipments which even ordinary person can understand. Engineer also does it only with equipments. He does not have any intuition to tell that this is the quality of air, this is the quality of water. He has to put the sample of air or water or whatever it is, yeah, even you have to come with a meter to study and measure the decibels, noise levels. Therefore, let us not think that uh, this audit is uh, going to be only for those guys. You can always commission if necessary for checking specifications which are technical in nature. Otherwise, largely, I will say by and large, these are something which can be studied thoroughly. If you look at the Environmental laws, you get Environmental Protection Act 1986. You got Noise Pollution Regulation and Control Rules, Water Prevention and Control 1974, Air Pollution Prevention uh, the 1981. These, of course, these three things like the Environmental Protection Act 1986, Air Prevention and Control of Pollution Act 1981, Water Prevention and Control of Pollution Act 1974 very fundamentals and the company secretaries are permitted to appear in tribunals which are appellate tribunals uh, against the orders of pollution control boards. We can appear there, appellate uh, tribunals are there, we can appear before the authorities and tell if consent has not been uh, granted, renewal of consent has been wrongfully denied or consent has been granted and as a member of public somebody has an objection to the noise, to the uh, quality of air, to the spoilage of environment, to degradation of water, underground water, everything can be argued before the appellate board and it can go the, beyond that to the NGT that is National Green Tribunal. So, you can appear also, this is the kind of authorization companies that have got. Why not we do audits? I, I am of the view that these laws are not taboo, these laws are not something Greek and Hebrew. You will be able to follow. Only thing you may not have attended to that, except for the exams, freshers I am saying. 
National Environmental Tribunal Act, National Environmental Appellate Authority Act, Chemical Accidents, Emergency Planning, Preparedness and Response Act, everything is by common sense. Any accident you should have evacuation plans, you should have disaster management. This country with social media, we have understood about disaster management. Now Sri Lanka is flooded. Immediately India is going to the rescue. Disaster, national disaster plan is there. Similarly for factories, accidents. Accidents could come from fire, could come from earthquake, could come from uh, leakage of uh, chemicals. What else you need for this country than the Bhopal gas tragedy for you to understand what has happened there? I believe the impact of Bhopal gas tragedy will be in the annals of history like the Hiroshima bomb blast in Japan. And therefore laws have come which says you, can, you have to handle it in a particular way. You should have a particular plan, you should have a particular evacuation drill, understood, sensitized. Biomedical waste, in the hospital sector you will use it. Recycled plastics. Common sense terms which you read in the newspapers every day, educate every, uh, you know, if you go to any national park, lot of information is given there. Municipal solid waste management. We have studied in our firm, we have studied, I mean, I have studied personally MSW treatment. What are the factors involved, what is the scheme, how it can be treated, what could be the technology, what could be the innovation methodology for this. We have been able to even apply for a uh, global patent for this. Our firm has handled it then, why not you? Ozone depleting substances. I think even the uh, eighth class student today, science student will be able to tell about harmful effects of chlorofluorocarbons. Ozone depleting substances. Odd even scheme. Batteries management. Hazardous waste management handling transboundary. Manufacture, storage and import of hazardous chemicals, e-waste management including certain things like tube lights are included there. It may not be an industry but still it will be coming under the e-waste because we use lot of lights. So therefore these rules and the laws are coming under the environmental laws, under the broad category of environmental laws or environmental regulations, whatever you call, you can call. I would say these are not applicable, these are not, not, not applicable to every industry. But they are certainly applicable to one or two in your, probably in your list. You will be able to apply thought by spending time on that law, little more time and specialize. Suppose you have two people in your firm, one can do other laws. One can always do the routine work, the bread winner. Then the one can do the additional things. I am of the view that it is not very difficult to look at the compliances. We have been able to generate checklists. Tomorrow don't send email uh, giving me the checklist. That doesn't work actually. Checklists have to be prepared by yourself. You have to study the law. A person who is doing a checklist will not be able to do proper job of administering the checklist and finding responses unless and until he develops the checklist by himself and by reading the act and the rules and the policy alone, he can develop a checklist. Otherwise, it is not possible. Checklist cannot be simply borrowed and you can't do a tick box approach. Social regulations. If you look at the social regulations, you are closely connected with workers, closely connected with the masses, the employing uh, you know, the people who are employees and workmen. If you look at this Labor Welfare Fund Act is there in certain states, you have to remit the Labor Welfare Fund. Provisions are there, how many people you are employing and per person how much you can contribute. This is a mandatory requirement, Labor Welfare Fund. Employment exchanges, notifications, a very mandatory requirement whenever you have a vacancy, notify. Persons with disabilities, equal opportunities, please see the law. Uh, you and me will definitely agree in this country, equal opportunity should be given. Persons with disabilities are not to be left out. Third gender, transgenders are also getting employment opportunities now. It is because of awareness, it is because of education. People have come to appreciate the special needs of such sections of people who are underprivileged because of disability. <coughs> 
the problem is about implementation laws are there that is why i said there are a company with beautiful policies bad practices there is no use but as a company secretary you can point out here is a company which has got all the policies but nothing on record during the secretary audit day for yesterday i will tell you one important uh, very uh, observation important observation csr policy one of the companies has written like this the csr policy of the company will be framed by the csr committee constituted by the board of directors and will be adopted is this a policy this is what the law says that you should frame a policy and host it in the website in the policy if you say the csr committee will frame the policy what is the policy so this is not the way in which you will implement the law this is not the way in which you will ensure compliance this is not the way in which you can audit compliances this is something different here is a case where you are expected to apply thought industrial audit as a product is not fit for those who do not want to apply thought those who do not want to take little more effort those who do not want to go to places meet people and study observe take notes keen observation must be there industrial audit is not something which you can do sitting at home and uh, seeing certain uh, scanned copies of uh, licenses and renewals and say everything is in order no i do not think the institute will accept such a uh, <clears throat> manner of audit in my opinion that will be disastrous that will be if that is the way industrial audit is going to be then managements will themselves say what is the value addition we don't need it and you can't expect a regulation for this you can't expect a provision in the companies act or some other law saying this industrial audit should be there so that at least as a matter of regulation naam ke vaste you keep doing something no this is something where you should put heart and soul because this involves heart and soul of people this involves heart and soul of the employers the society all of us are part of the society industrial audit is something we do it for our society industrial audit is for the well being of people remember the principle i have told you so if with that perspective if a person is looking at things it is then alone the there will be a meaningful industrial audit otherwise no be, i think it will be one of the uh, rubber stamp jobs it should not be there then you got industrial law industrial law is a very vast subject factories act there are n number of things to be done under factories act factories regulations are there industrial development regulation act of course the 1951 uh, act with the 35 items in the schedule i remember scheduled industrial industrial undertaking scheduled undertakings and all after the 1991 when pv narasimha rao was the prime minister 25th july 1991 new industrial policy came and uh, thereby it has gone down but today there is a regulation there is a law that talks about idra and there are certain powers of government which draconian in nature which we have to remember mines act contract labor regulation act is a very beautiful provision this is a provision which is i am saying that the name is a misnomer it says contract labor regulation and abolition it will never happen it will never happen and this law is not going to be abolished nor the contract labor is going to be abolished contract labor and uh, regulation and abolition act though it's a central act state regulations are there which has to be studied compliance by the contractor compliance by the principal employer compliance if not adhered to by the contractor how does it get transformed and uh, we can say fall upon the principal employer these provisions are very important you can't treat contract labor as some uh, third category people that is why i said this is something heart and soul involved heart and soul is there this is a law which you will be enjoying to do will be enjoined to do 
Interstate migrant workmen. See, beautiful laws are there. Interstate migrant workmen. People are recruited from some other state and they come all the way from Mizoram, Manipur. People are coming and working in uh, Bangalore and uh, Madras and Coimbatore and Mumbai, Delhi. Bihar people are working elsewhere. Tamil people are working in some place. We find people, migrant workmen, are working even outside the country, of course. So there are beautiful provisions which come under the category of industrial law. And there you have lot of things to do. All these compliances must be studied and administered, understood and then reported. Electricity Act, Fire Safety, Dangerous Material, Machines Act and uh, Industries uh, Micro MSME Act, Labor Law Exemption from Furnishing, certain uh, you know institutions have been permitted not to have this. All these are to be taken as the, we can say, scheme of the industrial audit. It comes from the, these four categories and from there we should guide the compliance, we should guide the management in terms of compliances for various purposes. There are objectives from labor aspect, there are objectives from various aspects. As I told you in the beginning, understanding the objectives is also very important for the purpose of going through these provisions. I just wanted to tell you about these four categories once more, industrial law, labor law, environmental, social law. Please remember these four categories, social category, environmental category, these are all very important, heart and soul is involved. So remember that particular part which is the first one you want to take, accordingly develop your skills, present the, your case to the management, get an industrial audit done and that will be an undefined scope. So you can have, you can define it within labor law, I will do this, within industrial law, I will take care. Like that you can do a compliance at different locations wherever the company has factories and I think you will be doing a great job. From the labor aspect, if you see the objectives, I will say it is a exploitation, is rampant in this country. It has been rampant right from pre-independence days. We have learnt exploitation from the British and it continues, the British Raj. Exploitation also continues. Education has brought some focus to ethical ways of running business. Protecting workers from exploitation is one of the public policies of the government of India. Providing social security, providing equal remuneration, fair remuneration, both are important. Fair remuneration means decently should be there. And equal remuneration, you can't discriminate between uh, men and women or on any other ground. Opportunity, discriminatory practice, equal opportunity should be given. Collective bargaining should be encouraged. Why? Collective bargaining was a slogan previously. If you see case laws and all, you will find collective bargaining, trade unions act, it will come. Today, every worker is having a minimum level of knowledge. Today, every employer also has a minimum level of practices, standard practices. And if you have professionals around, there will be scope for improvement in the working conditions, all these aspects will get enhanced for the good. Workers participation will be there, workers training will be there, skill development will take place. At the end of the day, for all these happy living, like Madhya Pradesh government said happiness quotient, they want to have a ministry and study the happiness. So like that, each and every factory, each and every workplace will be a happy place for the benefit of the employer also. If everybody is working happily, the output will be good. So all the benefits that are entitled medical benefit or, or retirement benefit or maternity benefit or uh, any other benefit which is available under law or as per the policy of the respective company, that should be available. So as a company secretary, it is not very difficult for us to follow the public policy at level 1, to create benchmark practices, to initiate movements for uh, sensitizing, developing skills, making people understand and create a workplace which is safe, which protects 
people from vulnerable situations, vulnerable elements and also in terms of disasters and acts of God. So that means you are making a living meaningful. Again go back to the principles and you will be able to relate it. I feel industrial <coughs> audit gives a very beautiful opportunity for company secretaries to integrate with the industries which is the backbone of our economy and do a value addition to the management with a defined scope and a very beautiful beneficial we can say engagement between the industry and the professionals and in the war game as usual we will have achieved three things a compliances we would have done a good job 100% risk elimination we would have achieved workplace would have become happy or happier than ever before Employers would have got some feeling that they should do some more because they are getting recognized, they are getting rated, their benchmark practices are followed in some other places. Regulators will be happy because what they are currently not able to completely take care is getting done through the professional initiative of the Institute of Company Secrets of India. With this introduction and uh, we can say coverage of industrial audit, uh, may now request Deepa to invite interact interactions. Thank you, sir. We have lots of queries and we have, we have lots of viewers. Uh, so we will take queries now one by one. Uh, the first query is which type of companies are required to conduct industrial audit? I have already answered this question. Industrial audit is something which is voluntary as far as uh, today is concerned. And I've, I have told you that it must be uh, big companies which have industries, which have units in different locations, which are at least of the medium uh, and above under the MS Med Act. <coughs> uh, then another query is, is there any possibility of internal audit becoming mandatory for companies? No, what is there in 138 is sufficient now. It covers industrial audit also. In fact, I would say that without doing this industrial audit, uh, functions and activities could not have an audited at all. Uh, another interesting question is, what is the difference between secretarial audit and industrial audit? We can bring out a lot of uh, differences. Fundamentally, the difference is that secretarial audit is driven by a statutory framework. MR3 guides you what uh, should be the audit uh, scope and what should be the report. Whereas industrial audit is completely outside the scope of, uh, we can say, substantially outside the secretarial audit scope. Industrial audit is altogether different which is not driven by any statutory requirement. In secretarial audit, neither the company nor the auditor has any role for uh, you know, altering the course. He has to report on certain things, that's it. You can't increase, decrease unless the law is amended, regulation is amended. Whereas industrial audit is something which is in your hands. You can always define your scope. That's why I said industrial audit is having undefined scope. <clears throat> Similar question is like uh, when secretarial audit covers most of the legislations which industrial audit is supposed to cover, do you think it may get recognition? It is not about recognition. I have already is, said yeah. that recognition is, should not be the uh, expectation. The expectation should be corporate social responsibility. The expectation should be 100% elimination of risk from compliances or non-compliances. The expectation should be the value addition. It should be voluntary. It should be invited. That, that is the spirit of this particular product. It is not uh, with a view to getting a recognition and a regulatory this and then make it a, an exercise which is for the purpose of meeting a regulation. I am talking about meaningful industrial audit and not talking about meeting a regulation and a checkbox taking approach. However, industrial audit has got nothing to do with secretarial audit. Secretarial audit in my view is about 
sector specific regulations that specifically apply to the company. Industrial audit applies to every entity that runs an industrial undertaking or an, a, a big undertaking which need not be a factory, it could be a hospital, it could be a, a, an enterprise and therefore it is completely different, it is absolutely different. So, uh, I think this has already answered by you, which type of companies are required to conduct industrial audit, it is benefits based, so I think each and every big company, small company should conduct the yes. industrial audit voluntarily and the uh, practicing company secretaries are, uh, should carry out this audit. Absolutely, this is a very beautiful product and uh, those who have the heart and soul in this subject, they can take it up. Uh, another interesting question is, what is the role of company secretary who is in employment in that industry at the time of audit in process? No, company secretary in employment is uh, never left out in this job. He is already taking care, but he may not have focused it. He may not have time to focus on this. He may have a team, but uh, in spite of having a team, even in uh, big companies, employment company secretaries may not have the time to focus on the various elements which are required to be covered. But as a compliance perspective, they would have already checked whether falana falana compliances which are required to be done are there in place, he would have done it. So, it is not beyond his scope, it is not uh, without his attention, it is, but sufficient fo focus is being brought about now. The purpose of ICSI introducing this topic is to lay focus on a particular product. Correct. Number two, Look at these practices dispassionately removed from the company or company's people. Company secretary in employment is part of the company. Yeah, he should support him. I am him. talking about dispassionately mm -hmm. from an external perspective. You look at it. How do you feel it? Then you will realize it because every person who is working in a workplace environment will be tuned to his job. Correct, correct. For example, a production will be happening. He will be, his thoughts will be to meet the customer requirement deadlines. Everybody is running just in time. In this kind of hurried atmosphere, there may be practices which are not taken note of. So, it is a sort of independent order. Exactly. Yeah. They, they, see, for example, work-life balance. I have told you about uh, overtime. Some uh, states follow 115 hours of overtime. Now you see, how, how, what is the kind of person he is going to be? So, therefore, practices ha can be studied only by a person who removed from the uh, job that is happening around. Then he can create benchmark, he can advise the management, yes, these are all the areas where you must be able to bring some changes, innovations, refreshing things. Another question which has come up is, uh, uh, in case of industrial audit, can we rely on the report of occupier? Audit is to be done by the auditor, that is all. So, he cannot rely, he will have to see, particularly go yes. and see First and check. First of all, the occupier him. was reduced to yeah, some uh, ordinary person. That is why the uh, Supreme Court in JK Synthetics case, JK case, no, it was a landmark case. Okay. The Supreme Court said occupier must be a director. Why was this uh, brought about? It was because the companies were practicing, some guys are appointed who does not have any big responsibility or knowledge mm -hmm. as the occupier. Correct. Therefore, the Supreme Court had to step down, Factories Act was amended. So, okay. if you want to rely on occupier's uh, opinion, then why would you go and do the audit? Audit is supposed to be done by you, you do not rely on somebody else Take and the occupier is after all company's uh, uh, employee. Correct. <coughs> uh, how to approach for industrial audit? Uh, that I have already answered in my presentation itself. Okay, sir. Uh, then uh, industrial audit versus internal audit? I feel industrial audit is part of internal audit and it is, a, you, we can say it is a subset of internal audit. Internal audit wherever it is not applicable also industrial <coughs> audit can be done. Correct. I am of the view that under 138 functions and activities is the internal audit scope which is very mm -hmm. broad. Without this it cannot be said that you have done a functions and activities audit. So, in a way industrial audit is mandatory now for certain exactly. class of companies. Exactly, all the class of companies under 138, it is mandatory and this is the time company secretaries can step in, step up their efforts and say the yes we are in the reckoning, we will help you to complete it. Without that if somebody says I have done the functions and activities, 
I feel it is not going to be correct. Uh, then sir, what precautions should an internal auditor take? Industrial auditor or internal auditor? In the internal auditor, I think it is uh, one and the no, same. Industrial thing. auditor can take the same precaution that a worker at the shop floor is supposed to take. If he has to wear the goggles as protective equipment, gloves, helmets, everything he should follow the same rule that is applicable. He should eat the same food that a worker gets. He should breathe the same air that the worker is engaged. So, this will help him to understand things. Okay. <coughs> uh, is it a social audit? It serves social purpose. Okay. Uh, can a company secretary being KMP in full time employment be appointed as industrial audit in same organization or only independent auditor is required? I think you have already answered already it should be answered. independent. Yes, yes. Um, if I take an internal audit, uh, audit of say an infra company engaged also in all kinds of infra projects. Now this company has number of branches in various states in India. There are numerous different laws applicable to such company that is central as well as state as well as some local. So how can we understand all these laws applicable to company and once we are done with <coughs> that how can we get an actual proper checklist to have a look at compliances of various provisions of all these laws. No, I have already said that institute can develop a mobile app. Yeah. Uh, Let us see if we are able to come out with some mobile app for that. Checklist, you know, you have to study. I told you checklist cannot be uh, Google searched and downloaded. That approach, please cut down. Yeah, <coughs> uh, institute is uh, working on development of these checklists sir, for some class of yes, industries. Maybe guidance. And we may uh, yeah. upload it at the website. Correct. Soon. Very good. Very good. Uh, can an auditor who has come across any major non-compliance in any factory or company file a complaint with the concerned authority? I remember one case of a statutory auditor going to the Central Bureau of Investigation, Prime Minister, President and what not. Because he was auditing the branch of State Bank of Trivancore and he found that there are certain frauds irregularities involving some lakhs of rupees those days it was a, not a present case it is 20 years back case a professional misconduct case was filed against the auditor and the institute of chartered accountants of india upheld that he has gone beyond his scope and he was held to be guilty of professional misconduct the purpose must be understood the purpose is to bring new practices which are benchmark practices which are in accordance with law and even beyond the law. The purpose is not to file a complaint and then get a punishment for the employer who creates employment opportunities. Purpose is to bring about a cultural change. That is why a professional is required otherwise you can have a regulator only who can come there and uh, fire people and go and then uh, so do some prosecution. That is not the intention. Industrial audit's intention is to bring about a change which is cultural in nature, culture change. Okay. Then it will become beautiful where benchmark practices will get developed. So if your scope is with the uh, company which appoints you, the engagement letter is given to you, there is a fee for that. You cannot go and uh, on your own report to the government saying that certain practices are not there. Of course, if you have a duty as a secretarial auditor or statutory auditor to report about frauds under some other provision of law, that you can do. But this is not the one requiring all these things to be done. In my opinion, that is a strict no. Thank you, sir. Uh, another question is, is there any specific format for issuing certificate for industrial audit? Uh, maybe ICSI guidance note can come that can give a format but I do not you know go by a format driven approach. Checklist driven approach is not uh, the proper one. Uh, how much professional fees we should charge? <laughs> I would say we should charge per hour basis. <coughs> how much you feel one hour you want you can see first. For example, if you go to an industry in a factory and work there for 18 hours in 3 days and for 18 hours you charge 2000 rupees, what are you going to get? 36,000 rupees. Is this sufficient for 3 days of your time and the travel, stay, all these things? 
No, you, you have to develop it. So, it, number of so men are involved. Uh, maneuvers is important. Then per maneuver, what do you want to charge? Uh, a person with 25 years of practice like okay. me might charge higher fees. Correct. Somebody who is a okay. fresher might charge less. But it is not about the years of experience which counts. It is the value addition you give to the company by your audit. That company will respect and remunerate you. So, therefore, always aim at the value addition. In the engagement letter, you ensure that you are getting that output. And the uh, cost of non-compliance is obviously uh, yeah, lesser a guiding than factor. <laughs> yeah. Correct. Uh, then, <coughs> what is the penalty for misleading report? What Since is the penalty for misleading? misleading report? Definitely, professional misconduct is a very important thing. Deficiency in service will also arise. Another uh, question is, before issuance of secretarial audit report, the observations were ratified by client and intimated to us. But the ratifications was with interest and late fee paid, then the non-compliance or not in time the compliance still could not be removed. Therefore, should the sectoral audit report indicate the sad fact or the observations be removed? I believe this topic is industrial audit. Yeah. This question we is uh, not uh, relevant. How to ensure management comply with our recommendations in order to not get qualified audit report? The management, as I told you, must bring about a change. See, the management will must be willing to bring about a change if you are able to convince the management that these are all the problems for you by the non-compliance. These are all the practices which will not give you reputation. These are all the practices which doesn't cost much. Slight changes will help you to achieve things. And I think most of the managements of today will be able to appreciate the value addition and undertake changes. I, I don't think there is, because if workers are happy, productivity will be very good. The right. workplace must be made happy. Work-life balance should be there. This is what is the achievement, qualitative aspects. Uh, then normally an audit happens as a post-mortem. How effective industrial audit? Industrial audit is uh, taking place as the industry is produced. It's a continuous. You go when the plant is running. So it's not a post-mortem, it's a continuous process. So another one is to what extent the CS is responsible for such audit? Is ultimate responsibility lies with the company? It is engagement letter. I have already said that the scope of work is defined by the engagement letter. And therefore, you are exposed to uh, probably consumer disputes or deficiency in service. You may be uh, providing a service and you will come under the category of service provider and the company may come under the category of a consumer. But if it is a business, commercial purpose, consumer act will go out, civil liability will come, professional misconduct will anyway stay. Uh, then, if any defect is found in industrial audit, whether it is required to give justification of that defect in director's report also? Like in Nobody gives about justification of de defect. People will be able to give what is the defect and what is the remedial action they have taken. There is no justification for defect. Defect will be there and if it is detected and pointed out, they have to take measures to remove it. Okay. And the list of laws which is identified by the industrial auditor, is that required to be stated in the director's report or director's no, no, responsibility? It's not required to be stated in the director's report, but definitely the report may be, you know, if it is very good, they can place it in the board. It can be recorded as part of the minutes that industrial audit was carried out by so and so expert and this is the scope of work and all. It will be very good for the board. The board itself will feel mm -hmm. uh, satisfied. Like in secretarial audit yeah. also, this the applicable the laws are required to be placed before the board as per the secretarial standards. Uh, then another question is, stock brokers and depository participants are exposed to inter internal audit by the SEBI regulations. Is it not amount to industrial audit? Mm, okay, next. Then, or uh, I think this has already been answered. Is industrial audit is based on capital or turnover basis or industrial audit? Today we are not having any regulatory requirement. Yeah. If you look at 138, there is a regulatory requirement. And looking into the benefits, <coughs> one must go for the voluntary industrial audit. Whether a company secretary is supposed to have technical knowledge about the industrial activities 
covered under the industrial audit? I, I am of the view that uh, people used to say this is not rocket science. Similarly, you know any industrial activity, if you go and observe the machines, you know what is the input and what is the output and how does it work and what power it consumes and there are all parameters which are already laid out and uh, written in the manuals and in the, uh, in the shop floor itself. So, what happens in the machine, what is the input and what the process it does and all is a very easily a person can understand. So, technical knowledge is not necessary. Do not think that the managing director who is running, uh, who is heading the organization is aware of all the machines and their functions and he can do a repair work of everything. It is not so. For all you know, the CS may be the MD. Correct. So, I think uh, there are no more queries. Okay. So, uh, the webinar has now come to an end. Can we have the uh, number of viewers, please? So, uh, I think success of any webinar depends on the number of viewers and we have around 3,000 viewers, sir. Uh, so, it, I think it is a successful webinar and uh, uh, we are thankful to you, sir, for uh, enlightening the members on a very new and important aspect, industrial audit. And uh, as a respect, I invite Kalpesh Mehta to give a memento to sir. <coughs> I thank ICSI for this uh, opportunity and thank uh, Deepa. And we will have lots of uh, uh, similar webinars as a series. Thank you all.